I'm going to show you how to make and cook the perfect vegan steak. Each one of these bad boys has an insane 85 grams of protein, which is more than one, two, three, four cans of baked beans. And while you're watching, try and have a guess at how much it's going to cost per steak because I think you might be a little surprised. I'll give you the answer later in the video. The first ingredient is the only thing that's not actually super common. It's the stuff called vital wheat gluten. Hopefully you should be able to find it in a local health store or something. But if not, I've got a link down in the description so you can buy it online in the UK or in the US. And we're gonna add one and a quarter cup or 150 grams of this magical stuff to a mixing bowl. Now make sure not to add two teaspoons of smoked paprika at this stage because it's actually easier to add it to the wet ingredients. Me being a perfectionist, I wanted to reshoot the entire video just to sort this out, but it's gonna be okay. We're gonna grab ourselves three quarters of a cup of water, which is 160 milliliters. Stick that in somewhere we can mix up and pour out of, along with a couple tablespoons of soy sauce. Once it's cooked, this gives it a more steak-like color, but most importantly, it adds some nice salty, rich umami flavors to it. We're also gonna add in a couple tablespoons of tomato puree. This obviously gives it a nice red color. It makes the steak more tender and the subtle tomato flavor really improves the overall taste of the steak. And now is when you should be adding in a couple teaspoons of smoked paprika and mix everything all together so it's nice and homogenized. Don't mind me, I'm just mixing in this paprika, which took surprisingly long. Now just add the wet ingredients to the dry and combine it into a beautiful dough. Hell yeah. Now we're gonna give it a good knead for five minutes. Ah, it's super satisfying doing this. Okay, the dough is looking beautiful. And while we let it rest for five minutes, let's start heating up some water, which we're gonna use to simmer our seitan. So there's a couple different ways to cook it. I'm doing this just because it's the most simple and I don't have a steamer. So what we're doing is getting a deep pan that can take plenty of water enough to easily cover the steaks. And so they got a little room to float around and expand. If you do have a steamer though, this can use a little bit less water, which is cool. And also the steaks should actually cook in around half as much time and they'll have a slightly lower water content. If you do have a steamer, then a lot of people seem to prefer that, so you can give that a go instead. But I've had great success with the simmering method. So now that it's been five minutes, I've cut our seitan dough in half, and I'm just gonna give it a bit more of a knead and then bring it out into a nice steak shape, or at least as nice as I can manage. These are probably not my best work, but they're gonna do the trick nicely. And now they're finished, our water should be boiling. So we're gonna turn that down and add in a stock cube. Some people put in soy sauce, but to me that just seems like a waste. Once that's all mixed in, we're gonna grab our steaks. And man, you would have thought I was on a budget the way I'm stretching this dough. Now give it a little slap for good luck and gently place them both into the water. Now pop on the lid and set a timer for 30 minutes or 15 minutes if you're using a steamer. So throughout these 30 minutes, if you're simmering, you need to keep a real close eye on it because you don't want it to actually boil. And 30 minutes later, let's open it up and flip them both over. Oh, there's a lot of steam. Stick the lid back on and set another 30 minute timer. And again, keep a close eye on them so they don't boil. After another glorious 30 minutes, crack the top of these beauties and stick them on a plate. Now, this is probably a good time to tell you that tongs really are the way to go with this. Obviously, I would never try and get these out with a spoon just to save on washing up, which ended up splashing boiling water everywhere, but maybe some people would. Anyway, we're gonna stick those to the side and get ready to cook our steaks. If you wanna store them, you can put them in the fridge or the freezer. Just make sure if you're cooking them that they're at least up to room temperature. Otherwise, they're gonna be cold in the middle. Okay, pan on a medium high heat and put in a tablespoon of sunflower oil, vegetable oil, something like that that doesn't have a low smoking point like olive oil or coconut oil. And we got some lovely fresh thyme here. I bought one of those little plants from the supermarket. I guess it's a bit of a fancy extra, but it's super nice. If you want to do something special, I'd say it's worth buying one of those plants. 
and of course some garlic to cook it up with we're just chopping off the ends and giving them a crush a lot of the recipes they will just crush them with the skin on and leave the skin on so that it infuses the oil but i like to take the skin off and give them a good cook so i can actually break off bits of garlic and eat the whole clove of garlic along with the steak let's grab these two hunks and oh they are still pretty hot. Now we're going to grind over a generous amount of salt and pepper as well. Then flip them over to the other side and do the same. All right, now the oil is shimmering hot, we're going to grab our steaks and gently lay them into the pan away from you just to make sure that nothing splashes. And if your oil is hot enough, you should hear that beautiful sizzling noise. Because the steaks were already pretty hot, it only took me about a minute to cook this side before flipping them over. Now we're going to add in a couple of tablespoons of plant-based butter. Some of it has much higher water content and will spit quite a lot. This flora one is pretty good but it is super salty. So just find your balance and get to know the best butter to cook with. And now we're going to stick in our cloves of garlic and our thyme and then just get to basting. We just need to keep spreading this fat over the top of the steaks like this and keep an eye on the thyme and the garlic cloves so they don't completely burn. If they're getting too done then just stick them on top of the steaks. This second side took a couple of minutes to cook but just keep an eye on yours and get it as crispy or soft as you like it. And there we go. We have our delicious homemade plant-based steaks full of protein. And now the moment you've been waiting for, the price per steak is... Congratulations if you guessed less than one pound. And if you like the video, check out the one that's on your screen now. Peace.